So, if we want to get into the wonderful world of Eurorack Modular Synths, the first thing you're going to have to do is put your modules into something. Um, to do this, you have to buy a case. To buy a case, you need a load of money. Uh, you don't necessarily need a great deal of money because there's a lot of incredibly affordable and very well-made cases. Um, but for fun, and also partly for practicality, I wanted to look at a way of making your own. Um, this is obviously a very good way of saving a tiny little bit of money because you negate the need to actually purchase a case, making it from very inexpensive materials. The other thing that's um, interesting about it is the idea of building a bigger case and actually making something that is um, not necessarily permanent, but a way of prototyping a case. So if you have a particular um, idea, um, if you want to make yourself a desktop case or even a large upright case, um, you may want to prototype the shape. I guess the main thing is ergonomics. Um, it's very easy to use pieces of software like SketchUp and design a case that looks great on paper, um, but without actually playing with it and getting a sense for the size of it and the angles of the uh, modules, you may find that you make something that's ergonomically not very fun to use. And if you've gone to the expense and trouble of actually manufacturing your own design, it could be a huge waste of time. So I put this as an interesting way of prototyping um, cases but it's also a good way of making yourself a cheap one so um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a case from cardboard now that sounds completely ridiculous but um, it's inexpensive and it's fairly rigid um, I've done this myself a couple of times uh, the first case first skiff I made uh, I wanted a portable case and I was trying to save money I purchased a micro Zeus um, which is this power supply from tip top audio I also bought a power supply itself as you have to buy a plug um, to go with it um, and then I bought some tip top audio um, rails Z rails they're called and these are 84 HP HP standing for horizontal pitch um, and basically these are your kind of standard sizes although we're starting to see um, 104 HP rails and bigger or even bigger in fact um, even smaller too but 84 HP is kind of um, kind of a norm and these are a good sort of size um, my first case was was this wide and so that's what we're going to use and you can buy these separately so for not an enormous amount of money you can get yourself the power supply and the rails and the plug so technically you're all set you have power rails and the plug but obviously the rails themselves are going to need to be put into something so um, this is where our little plan comes into mind and this is a PDF I just made to help um, just certain aspects of this design namely to put the dimensions of the pieces that you need to create and at the bottom also I have a template which is actual size um, and you can use this to create the end pieces and um, these are the little sort of angled end pieces and the tricky thing with this is just measuring where to punch the little holes that your rails will go into um, Take it from me from having built a case out of wood also, um, that is something that's very easy to get wrong and when you make it out of wood, um, well you kind of only get one shot at it, so the guide is going to be incredibly helpful. And you basically just cut this out and then you can have a piece of paper which makes it very easy to just trace around um, as we did. You end up with your um, exactly correct bit of paper and then of course on the right side you have these little holes here so that when you use um, something to punch through, you know exactly where to punch it. Very useful. Cool, so, in the grand tradition of Blue Peter, um, here's some that we kind of cut out earlier. These are the pieces that you'll need, um, and you'll start with the front piece, um, and let me just clarify the dimensions for you. The front piece should be 42.7 um, centimeters long which will correspond to the length of the rail. So you'll note that this is exactly the same width. And the front piece is 4.3 centimeters deep. So 4.3 by 42.7 centimeters. Okay, then you have a back piece. And the back piece is exactly the same width, 42.7, but it's 6.5 um, centimeters high. Um, this is to create an angle on the case, and this is partly the reason why I first kind of prototyped this, is that I wanted to experiment with angles um, and try and make a case that kind of presented itself, rather than making just a deep, completely square case, which isn't very ergonomic when you actually need to lean over to use the thing when it's actually on a desk. Um, 
Obviously at the bottom we need a base piece and this is made slightly wider and um, so this is actually 43.7 centimeters um, long and it's 14.4 centimeters deep. The last thing is that we need two of these little side pieces and these are the funky angled pieces um, which will make up the ends and we actually are going to screw screws right through these. Um, that sounds like it would all fall apart, but believe it or not, it works re relatively well. Just don't over tighten the screws and put them in gently. Um, here they are, M4 screws. They go right into the end of the rails. With the cardboard that we use, I definitely recommend using double walled cardboard. That's where you've got two kind of sandwiches of card. You can also get triple walled cardboard if you are a complete dude, um, but Double wall cardboard is what I've used in the past and it's actually remarkably strong. Um, it's about five um, millimeters thick, so I've taken that into account with the design. Um, but yeah, double wall cardboard. The other thing to bear in mind is that when you cut this out, um, try and consider the grain, as in the sort of, you can see the kind of top of the cardboard and the sides. Um, the top has the kind of wafer pattern visible. Try and keep that vertical um, because if you have that sideways, it will cause the card to sort of want to fold um, this way. By having the grain vertical, it just adds extra vertical strength. Um, so yeah, just watch for that when you cut this out. Okay, so let's put this all together. And to do that, um, we are going to use backing tape um, because it is very good at sticking to cardboard boxes. That is what it is designed to do. And it just kind of has a certain aesthetic. If you want to use something else like clear sellotape, um, more power to you, brother. Um, but I'm gonna use packing tape because this doesn't have to look pretty. It'll look functional. So before we do that, I'd like to punch the holes in the end pieces just because that's gonna be trickier to do once they're actually built into the case. Um, so I'm gonna line up my little guide as carefully as I can, and placing it on the table and just pin to mark the little holes just to make sure I definitely cool so that's marked and I can obviously make those holes bigger later using a tiny little jeweler screwdriver or something like that. I'm going to use the template to turn the other way out and I already have the holes because I punched them so that would be there and there. Marvellous. Right thank you very much. So um, let us actually stick it all together. You can do this pretty much however you like. I'm actually just gonna do the end pieces first. The key point is that when you assemble this, just to remember that the end pieces are gonna kind of sandwich these interiors. Um, so it's kind of why I think it might make sense to put the end pieces on first. Um, the other key point is to make sure that you don't put the pieces on the outside of the base, as in don't sort of come from the outside like this. What you want to do is make sure they're on top of the base. Um, again, this is the whole idea is that everything is kind of on top of, butted up against everything else, so it's all pulled together by the tape. Okay, so we've got the end pieces on, uh, just with a single piece of tape, just to hold them in place. We can always add more later. And then you see that the back piece should, in the theory, fit in. If our measurements are correct, then there's enough space for it to fit, be sandwiched inside. Um, yeah. Then we can take that into place. And the way I find it helpful to do this is to put the tape along the bottom first and then flip it over. Okay. So we basically just got a couple of little end pieces and a couple of length pieces just to hold the whole thing together. Um, it proves that the whole thing fits we cut out all the pieces correctly. And what we can do now is just go through and properly seal off all these ends 
tie everything together with as much tape as we possibly can. What we can also do is run tape along the inside of this just to again seal it from the inside and from the outside and just kind of tie and grip everything together. Um, one tip is to add little diagonal pieces along here um, just across and then touching the sides basically to just to draw the whole um, case together. So let's go through and add yet more tape. So one corner piece here, okay so we have totally sealed it off with tape and um, we used initially small pieces just to test the shape of the thing um, and then I've gone around progressively added more and more tape that is after adding those little lateral pieces in the bottom so you can add as much or as little as you want um, it doesn't hurt to add a fair bunch of tape but you don't have to go too crazy and the thing starts to take on additional strength. I've also gone through and I've added tape on the inside just to stop the pieces from moving around at all. Um, but we'll find when we get to the next stage it takes on even more strength. So obviously we need to actually fit some rails. Um, to do that we have our two 84 HP rails and I've actually fitted a couple of blanking plates which is incredibly helpful as it obviously just holds the shape of the thing. This is the correct width um, and you just need to make sure you've got the ends lined up properly so that it is straight. But with that done, obviously what we're going to need to do is put this into the case and we're going to have to screw in the end pieces. You can see here that you have these kind of holes and the M4 screws go right into these. Um, of course, we're going to need to use our little um, pinholes that we created as a kind of guide to punch through and put larger holes through which we actually screw the thing directly into the cardboard. So first let's actually fit this thing in. So this is all looking pretty good and what I did was after I um, taped around the outside I kept, I, uh, I redid the pinholes so I actually do on the outside I can see the little holes um, and so if we take this as an example what we can use is if you, um, I'm lucky enough to have one of these kind of awesome sort of punch screwdrivers. This is just basically like a fat pin, um, a cocktail stick, or even if you have like a little um, kind of jeweler's screwdriver or something like this, you can use that to help guide and create a larger hole through the edge of the case. Um, so if I show you here, whilst I'm actually holding this so that I'm actually keeping the um, rails hole lined up with the outside, I use the pinhole and then basically enlargen the hole. This tool's perfect because I can actually feel that this is totally married up inside with the M4 screw hole. So we've created a larger opening and we know that it's actually in line. So now oh, I can take my M4 screw and with a little bit of fiddling I'll be able to get it through the card and actually it will bite through into the rail that's on the other side. Phillips. The key point here is when we come towards the end, don't go absolutely nuts. Obviously this is just cardboard, so it's enough to kind of get it to a good sort of place where the screw head is flush with the case. You don't have to pinch down on it too hard. If you do have washers, obviously it makes sense to use a washer on the outside so it'll just help hold against all of the um, material, but it works well enough. And then you see, you go around to the other side so we can put another M4 in and then the same thing again. Okay, last one. Done. And there we go. What we've done is we've created a 3 HP case, which might sound ridiculous to make it out of cardboard, but I have done this exact same thing in the past myself. I built a case very much like this and used it for well over a year. I actually treated it pretty badly. I took it out with me to a couple of shows um, it, and it held up remarkably well. It didn't fall apart, um, it didn't break and it didn't set on fire. The only key point here is that you must use metal rails. Um, when we actually put the Micro's use in, one of the requirements of the Micro's use is that it 
be married to metal rails. Don't use wood or other materials and just screw it in because the rail itself acts as a heat sink to help dissipate heat that this generates. Um, in practice, it's actually fine. Uh, one of the tips with the micro's use anyway is just to keep an eye on it and, and feel the, the um, front plate. If it's getting incredibly warm, that means that you're actually overstressing the micro's use. Um, depending on the power supply you buy, there is kind of a limit to the capacity that it can deliver. Um, but in this size of case, um, unless you're using very high draw modules, sort of vacuum modules or um, you know heavy kind of digital modules, it's unlikely that you're going to max it out. Um, and really, you can extend this. Um, once I got um, once I expanded my modular, I, was, I created a new case, which was actually two rows of this. Still using cardboard, you just buy additional rails. Um, but just be very careful about the power consumption. Um, it's important to just check out the total power consumption of the modules that you're um, going to use. Look on the manufacturer's website, find the power specs, and add them all up so we make sure that you're not going to max out the power supply. Um, but yeah, hopefully this has helped you, even if it's just given you some ideas. Um, and if you um, build something like this, be sure to share it. Thanks very much.